Hi, it's Michael Lipinski again from the Lipinski Design Group. The Zero Meridian is approaching the event horizon, so I've got to get through this in one take, and uh, I don't have time to go off on a rant like I have done in the prior two videos, which was an attempt to get through this particular section because we have this much left before we move on to the MEP section, structural section, electrical section, and then the telecommunications, and then back to legacy software platforms. And again, I'm burning one gigabyte after another on my dime, so, you know, someday I appreciate a return on my investment, so it'll come to fruition for me. Chapter 18, documenting your design, I'm gonna go back. While the industry continues to move towards a 3D building information model as a construction deliverable, today we still need to produce 2D documents for construction document set, or design reviews, for design reviews or design reviews. Using the integrated documentation tools in Autodesk Revit software, you can create these sets with more accuracy and reliability than in the past. In this chapter, you will take the elements you have previously modeled and detailed and begin to create documentation for your design. In this chapter, you'll learn to document plans, create le uh, schedules and legends, lay out sheets, documenting plans. In this chapter, we'll introduce a scenario that will mimic what might happen on a real project. In preliminary design phase, we are going to assume that you'll be using the C18 Sample Building Start Revit or the metric equivalent model from this book's uh, companion website. And we talked about that, Cybex.com, right? Mastering Revit 2018 or 25. Here's a story. You've recently completed some preliminary design work. You really have, as have I. We're designing. In advance of your upcoming client meeting, we have so many client meetings we have to go to. Uh, mind your P's and Q's. Don't you remember the manners I told you? Remember, we're in a catering business. <laughs> but um, you'll need to lay out the plans, elevations, and perspectives on some presentation sheets for the meeting. But you'll also have to include some building metrics, such as area plans and schedules for overall spaces. In the following sections, You'll set up those views and sheets, starting with the area plans. For the purposes of program verification, you have decided you need to establish spatial areas for the building so the client can get some preliminary pricing from the contractor. Before you create your area plans, we'll discuss some of the various ways you can calculate areas in Revit. Now, this is a certification objective, so depending on which department you're going to add into, I mean, you, I already know, Taylor, that you're, migra you're migrating towards Microsoft Excel. You and Jake, I, can see, I know what you're up to. You're playing with Microsoft Excel, so I know which way you're going. In any event, listen, listen, I said. Calculating space using room objects, certification objective. The simplest way to calculate the space in a building design is to walk around with your feet. Sorry, I can't do this again. I'm sorry, I won't, I won't, I won't. But professional mic. Well, let me put my, I have three mics. I have left, right, and the professional mic. The simplest way to calculate the space and ability design is to use room objects. Room tags can be used to report room name, department, area, and any other properties of a room. These properties can also be scheduled to report the total area of all rooms within a design. With rooms, however, the areas that they report are limited to how those spaces are defined. With the sample building start Revit file uh, model open, choose uh, Architecture tab. Then, access the expanded panel under the room and area panel. Click area and volume computations, which opens the area and volume computations dialog box. You will see the options for room area computation in the project. The, the choices are as follows. At wall finish, at wall center, at wall core, at wall core center, because of each of these settings affects uh, because each of these settings affects the entire project, a level of consistency is ensured for room calculations. However, the global nature of the settings make it difficult to use the room objects for gross area calculations. Room calculations can give you an accurate net area or carpet area that refers to the area between the finished wall surfaces considered as occupied space. This value can also be reported in the room tag or in a schedule by selecting the first uh, choice under the room area competition setting at wall finish. Be easy with a teleprompter. Okay, 
Okay, so at wall finish, in the area and volume competition dialog box, select this option and click OK. Please note that should you instead choose the areas and volumes option, Revit will also calculate the room's volume, but it has to have a ceiling uh, or it'll go right to the roof. Um, it'll also uh, computate um, that as well, the room volume, which will impact performance for larger prop, uh, files. And I've given some static images of this all along the way as breadcrumbs. Uh, so that you notice where I'm going with this and whether or not you follow along. I thought working off as a madman is purely up to you. Let's see how this looks in the future in the floor plans. Let's see how this looks in the future. Activate the level two floor plan. In this view, we have already established the rooms and added room tags. However, the tags do not show the room areas. To modify these settings, follow these steps. Select any room, any of the room tags from the properties palette and choose edit type. And blah, 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 blah. Or I could create a new one like I did in the other video, but we'll do it this way and this time. In the type properties dialog box, select the show area checkbox. Now this is a parameter that we could have added into a tag that we created. Remember, like I showed you in the video that I was ranting in? Um, show area is selected. Right, wait, let's see here. Show area checkbox. Click OK to exit the dialog box. Well, we did that. It's showing the area. If I shut it off, you can see it's not showing the area. If I turn it back on again, the every tag that every every room tag is going to show the area, and I'll even turn on the volume a little bit higher, and then you show it, let's see the volume. But the uh, label wasn't wrapped, so it's going to overwrite itself. It didn't. Um, it, it didn't return. If you're in Microsoft Word terms, it didn't return to the next sentence or the next uh, next line. Um, it's uh, superimposed over the first one. And if you can see, you really can't do anything in the tag. We, uh, you have to actually edit that family, right, um, in order to do that. So let's just undo that. Uh, I don't want to go off on a rant, but you saw how we created those before. So I'm just going to do what it said, turn this back on, turn on the area, edit type, turn on the area, leave the volume off. Actually, I just want to see the volume of these rooms. Hold on, turn the area on. Not computed, not computed, not computed. Okay, so um, there's no parameter associated with that just yet. Just hold that thought. It may not have been a room bounding wall. Lots of different things that could have uh, prohibited that from happening. Um, but we're not going to dig into that because I'm off on a tangent. I just told my kids I can keep doing that. I've got to stay focused and not worry about them every goddamn second of the day. It'd be nice to have an all pair. In any event, I don't have that luxury. Seven kids, it isn't easy. It's like being the old lady in the shoe. And I empathize with her, too. So Lord knows she's been through hell. But again, what are you going to do? All right, so now, that being said, um, I'm just going to sprinkle that in just for the masses. Um, do what you can in life, right? Addict will get, an addict will get you to use before you can get them to quit. Right? I'll say it again. An addict will get you to use before you can get them to quit. Apply. That message is for somebody else. Anyone who knows me knows that who's that message is for. I hope it doesn't fall on deaf ears. I wouldn't want to miss, wish anyone horror. Lord knows it must be a horrible existence. In any event, sorry that the scars run deep. Okay, so now that being said, you see how that adding that parameter checkbox or check, checking that parameter, a yes or no checkbox, uh, turns on the area computation. Now, that being said, uh, we've, we've, pro we've uh, performed that. Now, the next uh, paragraph leads us into a certification objective. Now, you should see the areas reflected in the room tags uh, as shown in the figure on the screen. This is because the show area setting was created as a yes-no parameter assigned to the visibility property of the area label within the room tag family. If you want to explore this functionality further, you can open the tag family, select the room tag, and click Edit Family in the contextual tab of the ribbon. If you select any of the room tags, you can also see the area that is calculated. Um, sorry, if you select any of the room tags, you can also see the area that is calculating displayed with a red outline. When, when adding rooms, you are not limited to only rooms that are bound on all sides with walls. If you note the lounge and lobby spaces on level one, shown on the screen, there isn't a wall dividing the two rooms. 
yet they're shown as being independent of each other. This separation is achieved by using room separation lines, which can be placed with the room separator tool located on the room and area panel of the architecture tab. Uh, uh, la la la, where is it? I just saw it. Room separator tag on the architectural tab. It was here five seconds ago, where is it? Room separator, do I have it in the right place? Uh, located on the room and area panel of the architectural tab. Room and area, oh, I'm so silly, it's right in front of my face. Creates a room separation line to bound rooms where no walls or other room bounding elements exist. Open a floor plan view to place a separation line. If the space already contains a room, the room boundaries adjust to the new separation lines. If the space does not yet contain a room, you can create one now. I apologize for going through this a mile a minute, but I am, you know, a product of my environment. I've been working in Manhattan a long time in all the outer boroughs, and I've had all these kids, and again, I don't have the luxury of time, so this is why you're seeing this behavior. It doesn't necessarily have to do with any damage. It has to do with conditioning. I'm conditioned to behave this way. So I have been cognizant of that for a long time, fully aware that someday I'm going to be able to relax because I have relaxed in the past and I have enjoyed it. I have enjoyed relaxation. Um, I just haven't had the luxury of it. That's why that's, uh, I, I, I tend to really, really get a, I get a pet peeve when I think of all these people that have the luxury and they take it for granted when um, luxury doesn't necessarily... Uh, mean that it's made of velour or velvet or red carpeting it could very well be just an opportunity to relax luxury could just very well be the luxury of time to relax and uh, therein lies the strength of my patience and I said in the first video patience is a virtue uh, and uh, just like Paul Schoenberger said he was waiting his whole life for this well I've been waiting a few years myself just to be able to finally you know really reiterate my point and illustrate it because this is about the persistence of tools the persistence of it and um, the, the users of the tools uh, will, will, will be much much more they will be required to uh, to, uh, to have much much more responsibility so uh, as you see that's the room separator and so is this between you and I use two, three, four or just you and I it you know, could very well be, or it could be me and me, right? I mean, we are all alone in this world, body of Christ, right? Now, Adam and Eve, you know, like I said, I'm going to sprinkle theology into this. You have to think about that, right? She's a brick house. It's, it's only you and I. What is it? Uh, Adam and Eve to breathe life into of the earth or vice versa. How do you see it? How do you see it? Adam, to breathe life into Eve of the earth. How do you see it? Hmm? How do you see life? What perspective do you see it? Well, let me tell you. And there, I told you now, I expect a call back. Note that these lines will print and export and other model with other model and annotation elements, but you can adjust their visibility in the visibility o graphic override dialog box. If you if you decide to change the visibility of the room separator lines and turn them off within a view, they will continue to divide the room objects. You will find these elements in the visibility graphics dialog box on the model elements tab under lines room separation. Because area calculations using rooms don't usually include wall thicknesses, let's look at another way to calculate areas using area plans. Now, that's a very important. Think about that. Hey, I'm, buying, I'm renting this space. It's 300,000 square feet. Well, okay, that's fine. But where did you take the measurements from? I can't put a coffee table, you know, in the middle, in between the insulation and the uh, three-quarter inch sheetrock because there's going to be studs in the way to cut it out. Did you include that in the calculation? Because I ain't paying for it. Well, maybe I am. We'll see. Now, and that plays a big part in it because how people measure these uh, and how they're going to charge you, oh, that's a huge thing. Are you just going to take for granted that those calculations are correct? He's going to fork up the cash. Yeah, there's ways at which you don't even have to go out there with a ruler. Just to let you know, there's ways you don't even have to go out there with a ruler. But most do. Most go out, maybe a laser transit, maybe a laser range finder. But there are ways you don't even have to do that. You can get a robot to do it. <laughs> or then again, you can just be paying someone really, you know, you can be underpaying somebody and that could be a robot. But then again, 
Some people are human beings, some are robots, and some aren't even human beings at all. Yet they dress like they are. All right, so working with rooms and areas. Rooms and areas are, are the two object types you would use to annotate and report the occupied space within your building designs. You can use room area, uh, you can use room tags and area tags to visualize data, such as uh, room, a room name or a number, but the tags merely report the data that exists in the object itself. So how do you work with objects that have no solid geometry? Both rooms and areas have a reference that can be seen if you hover the mouse pointer with a space. Now hold that thought. I was looking at one of my videos, and this is for the smokers out there, because um, in, the interest of, in the industry that I'm in, I went to a lot of shops that design hospitals. They work with, they build hospitals. And uh, hospital design, hospital construction, very, very, very different than lots of different construction practices. So just keep in mind, for you smokers out there, I went through some of these videos that I was doing, and I, I could see on some of the longer ones, I was putting my, my, my fingers up to my mouth uh, by habit, this oral fixation um, from the cigarettes. Nicotine plays a part in this as well. That's why I have to smoke, you know, 15 feet from the building. So smoking plays a huge part in uh, architectural design. Smoking. Then again, smoking plays a huge part in taxes too. So um, I'm a smoker, but I, I strive not to be. But then again, sometimes I really enjoy smoke. But I have to reach a happy medium or I'm not going to be able to do anything. I won't be uh, employable. Well, unless, of course, I can generate cash flow by myself. But that may not be good. I really, really think I should conform to somebody's authority and, and be prohibited from doing it um, to enforce myself uh, so that I don't smoke. So I, I almost need somebody in my life to be an authoritative figure. I prefer to be female and, and share my domicile. Because I can't remember the last time I actually slept next to a woman, not had sex with her. I actually slept in the same goddamn bed. As a, you know, as a couple, it'd be nice to have a companion in life. Lord knows, Philip's nice, but I'm 50, you know. And granted, I'm a little rough around the edges, but trust me, there's a method to my madness. It would be nice to uh, coexist in, a, in an area with a, with, a, with, a, with a companion. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I'm ready for a relationship at this particular point. And who the hell knows who would be capable of coexisting in a relationship with the family that I got. I got a psycho, psycho family. Um, but it would be interesting for you. You have to have a really, really good sense of humor and a lot of patience. Uh, but then again, I'm not on Plenty of Fish or Match.com. Uh, but again, I don't even know if I have time. I would probably just neglect her anyway. Anyway, maybe I can find someone that shares the same interests and not uh, be uh, oil and water. Some relationships are just toxic. And they stay together anyway. Uh, I remember being... Uh, some I'm not going to talk about, talk about my time in Monmouth, New Jersey, but in any event, we'll get to that. Lots of, you know, it has to jump off the shelf. I mean, I, when it comes to women, it's almost like clothing. It has to jump off the rack. I, I really, I used to go looking for it. Sometimes it used to come looking for me years ago, you know, when I was a younger man. Uh, but nowadays, it's few and far between, obviously, but that's nobody's fault but my own. Anyway, stress will do that to you as well. Stress will put you on the couch. Stress will put food in your mouth. Stress will, you know, make you really, really, uh, stress will take away your sex drive. It will. It could take away your sex drive. You can no longer be attractive, attracted to women. Stress, stress could do that. Life can beat you down where you don't even care about that anymore. And uh, that was, used to be my primary directive, right? As a young man, young, dumb, and full of calm, all, all I would do, that was my main mantra. It was, that's what we're here to do. We're, we're here to go out and find women, right? Look for women. And it, some, you know, have no respect for them. And, you know, they want to just notch another one of them in their belt. And some are women are the same way. They just, they just can't make up their mind. They just can't. And at least, by, listen, everyone, lots of girls and guys shop for things and they just can't pick out the right one. So no one's perfect. And you know, if you're waiting for that perfect companion, hopefully you'll, you won't be waiting long. But hopefully, uh, uh, yeah, hopefully it'll happen for you. But I, I'm tired of going on dates where I pay and I feel like uh, I, I should have brought my resume with me. You know, have you ever been on a date where all you, or have you ever exhibited the behavior that I have during dates where uh, you feel like you're at a, a job meeting where you're looking for a job and you, you like you're, uh, you're, you're trying to sell yourself with a resume? Have you ever been on a date like that? I have. And I've also been on dates where 
I, I knew it wasn't going to happen because I wasn't attracted to it, or at least that, that attracted to them. But you know what? I didn't bail out anyone. I still foot, footed the bill because I am a gentleman. I'm still very, very old-fashioned. But I, I'll be honest with you. I can't remember the last time I went on a date, and I was... I can't remember the last time I went on a date that was Dutch. I've been pr practicing the old-fashioned method for a very, very long time. And money can't buy you love. It really can't. Because I've tried. And I've tried to buy it. And uh, money can't buy you love. I know that. I've learned that lesson the hard way. Okay, so working with rooms and areas. Rooms and areas are the two objects types you will use to annotate and report the occupied space within your building designs. You can use room tags and areas tags to visualize data such as a room name or number, but the tags merely report the data that exists in the object itself. So how do you work with objects that have no solid geometry? Um, we talked about that. This is the, the, um, the room separator lines. Uh, both rooms and areas have a reference that can be seen if you hover the mouse pointer within a space. Sometimes these reference, references can be difficult to find, but there is something you can do to improve your efficiency when working with these objects. In a visibility graphics dialog, uh, visibility graphics overrides dialog box, locate areas of rooms in the model categories tab, expand the category for other, for either object and uh, you will see interior fill and reference. These ca subcategories are turned off by default, but you can turn them on if you will be frequently editing these objects. And they're on right now, but now you can do this being that you're not in a template right now. So within the view properties of the view, you can go to the properties palette and do it here, or you can go up to the visibility of the view ribbon, and up here you see visibility graphics, which will apply to the view that you're in. So there's two places to do it. So I did it here, not, now that I have no template applied, you can go down here and you can see that there's going to be, I think it's in the models category, right? Lines. You have it down to lines. Here we go, lines. You'll see, you'll see um, the lines here, room separation, and you'll see area boundary. They're both checked, and those are the, the axes. Now, I don't think there's any areas placed in this yet, or they're placed and I can't place them again. Ordinarily, you can select both of them, but I remember before I can only select I could barely select the room, but I had to tab to get it. So this is a room, but I, I can't see the area. So it could very well be there's no areas in here. Now I could select everything, and I could look at the filter to see indeed if there's any area. I don't see, it's alphabetized. So I have 249 things selected, and I don't see any areas. So I'm gonna make a safe assumption and say that the areas haven't been placed in this particular model yet. That's one way of finding out if they're there. I'm selecting all, I'm checking the filter. Now. Speaking of filters, we've gotten through that, so that's one way at which you can discern, um, um, locate the areas and the, and the room designations, because you have to put them in after you build the walls. But how you build the walls is going to also dictate how these rooms and areas behave and these spaces as well. There are certain criteria and parameters that go into this prior to you putting in the areas and the rooms and the spaces that you may have to take for, into consideration. Again, thermodynamics. Okay, so creating area plans. Area plans are views of the model used to calculate ref defined two-dimensional spaces within the model according to prescribed calculation standards, but with the added ability to customize the area boundaries. The software allows you to create as many area calculation schemes as you need to depict the design. Area boundaries can exist only in area plans and can be either manually placed or automatically associated with walls. If they're automatically placed, the areas within them will be calculated based on the BOMA standard. BOMA are area calculations. BOMA stands for the Building Owners and Managers Association, widely used in the United States by architects, developers, and facility managers alike. It was created to help standardize building development and spatial needs. BOMA uses its own set of standards for calculating areas that have some nuances related to exactly where the area boundaries between the spaces fall. Depending on the area type property, you can find more information on BOMA standards at www.boma.org. It may very well be a 501c in any event, also on the jibei.org website. The default project template includes some predefined areas. To add to the list of available area schemes, assess the expanded room and area panel in the architectural tab of the ribbon, and then click area and volume computations. So again, in the architectural tab, in the room and area panel, area, and I can pin that so it stays open, area and volume computations. 
Okay, hold on a second. When the Area and Volume Computations dialog box opens, choose the Area Schemes tab. And this isn't a scheme to defraud you. This is me being genuine. Here you can add as many new area schemes as your design requires. For each area scheme, you can create associated plans, schedules, and area boundaries lay boundary layouts. However, be careful not to add too many superfluous area schemes on larger projects because doing so can degrade performance and increase file size. So area schemes. And as you can see, there's one here already that I already did. So the next uh, paragraph reads as follows. Create a new area scheme by clicking the new button. By default, this will be a rentable type plan based on Bowman calculation rules. You will see a new area scheme in the list. Click in the name field of the new row and rename the scheme usable area. Click OK to close the area and computations dialog box. To continue this exercise, you'll need to create area plans for your presentation. You can create an area plan for either of two locations. One is located on the Room and Area panel of the Architecture tab. The other is located on the Create panel of the View tab. Follow these steps, and I didn't, uh, I didn't know that. I thought it was only here. Well, let's do that. From the Architectural tab in the ribbon, find the Room and Area panel. Let's unpin this. Room and Area panel. Click Area, and then click Area Plan. Okay, now I'm not going to do that just yet because I want to go to the View panel and find it there because I don't remember seeing it there. View, Plans, Bob, there it is. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know what? I was, the other video said it wasn't here and it sure is. All right, so I missed that. Again, I'm only human. And at this speed, you'll know I'll speed bump over a few things. But then again, this is what it takes. This isn't for the faint of heart. If you have the luxury of doing it, you know, and maybe you'll behave a bit differently. But again, if you... Uh, if uh, you miss the sounding gun, then, you know, then it's something else. All right, now, um, yeah, so we can do it from there. So from the architectural tab, uh, find the Roman area panel, which is right here, and click area, and then click area plan. There we go. Creates an area plan view. Area plans to find spatial relationships in a building. After creating an area scheme to define areas in a plan, you can assign area types to individual areas in the area plan. And that is so interesting. Wait till you see this. Okay, so now, got that. Um, from the type drop-down menu, choose usable area. While pressing the control key, select both level one and two. Do not duplicate existing views, right? Or duplicate them, right? Now that's important. I guess I should touch on that. Look at the project browser for a second. You have floor plans, level one, level two, roof one, right? But now you don't have roof two, okay? You don't see roof two, right? You don't see that, but yet you see it here. Now if we, if I went and expanded all this, just if I expanded all these, you'll see, I mean, if my head doesn't cover them all, you won't see certain um, you won't see uh, certain um, levels, right? And it'll give you the option of not uh, not being able to select or uh, or not be able to duplicate views. So I just bring that up because you may not see it. You may not see the view, uh, the, the levels that you need. So usable roof one and roof two. Do not duplicate. Right, because they're already there, level one and level two. But we want to be able to duplicate them. But we want to be able to duplicate them um, with a different um, type. So hold down control and, and grab, grab level one and level two. Uh, usable area. Okay, so click OK. Now, as you can see, in oh, I did this twice. I apologize. I, I went through this exercise before. Remember, silly me. Well, here they are, usable area. We created them. And again, it's from rushing. Tape head cleaner. <laughs> Tape head cleaner. Anyone who's been to the village knows what that means. Okay, so, speaking of a rush, fish islands. Click OK. You are prompted with the option to automatically generate area boundaries for exterior walls. That's not true. We were not. We were not given that option. We were not given that option. So, Let's do what I like to do when that happens. Let's hit control and let's uh, delete them. So we can do it again. 
So area, area plan, a usable area. Let's see if we get that, that message. Didn't get it, didn't get it. Click on here, you are prompted with the option to automatically generate area boundaries for exterior walls. Because you selected more than one level, you will receive a prompt for each level for which a plan is being generated. Go ahead and click yes to generate the plans automatically. I think it may have happened earlier. So um, I don't see that. So what I'll do, because I'm uh, neurotic, is I'm going to close this project and do it again because that's just how it works. Um, I, I'm not going to uh, just... Uh, fly through that that's actually pretty important so hold that thought now come back over here and here it is again i didn't save it so let's just do that again because i want to see that message come up so you can see it in the interim i'll have some coffee so stay uh, stay with me here and there's a method to my madness there's a method to my madness some new some new yeah I see some looks i get when i walk around town <laughs> they see me oh there's that crazy guy from facebook all right, hold on a second. Let's see the best for last. Sneaky Pete. Okay, so back to that again. Um, we just let's do it right from the uh, drafting view. Let's go to architecture, uh, area, area plan, and we'll go level uh, usable. Ah, we don't have usable here. Hold on a second. Let me see if I could uh, come back over to level one. See if I can get it here. I screw myself by doing that. Do I, do I have to go through any uh, any additional steps? Area plan. Give me usable. Oh, wait. Why not? Hmm. Hmm. Says the blind man. Is it because I didn't add the rooms? Are the rooms not added to here? Is that what it is? What could be the problem, Batman? What could be the problem? What did I miss? Rentable? Usable? Oh, I know why, silly. Right? We missed a step. We missed a step. We were supposed to go here and do area and volume computations and go to areas only. Areas, areas here, add a new one, change this area scheme to usable. We didn't create the uh, scheme, right? Didn't create the scheme. Usable area. All right, again, hopefully this uh, information will benefit someone, and if we can never return dividends to me, even tangentially. Like I said before, you know, if we're going to get into a corporation, maybe we should co-sign Tiny. So, that being said, let's just put that there. And now we're good to go, I think. So we're still on the tool. We go to area, area plan. We should be able to now pull this down as a type, which we just created. And then we'll be able to grab level one, level two, and hit OK. And we see, should see that in the project browser. And sure enough, that prompt did pop up. And it says, click OK. You are prompted with the option to automatically generate area boundaries for exterior walls. Automatically create area boundaries lines associated with all exterior walls. Yes. It said it would do it twice. Twice is nice. Automatically create area boundary lines associated with all external walls? Yes. Now, usable area. Boom, we got it. So far, so good. Uh, click OK. You are prompted with the option to automatically generate area boundaries for exterior walls because you selected more than one level. You will receive a prompt for each level for which a plan is being generated. Go ahead and click Yes to generate the plans automatically. This creates new area plans under a new node in the project browser. Area plans, usable area. The name in the parenthesis will always be associated to the area calculation type you used. Usable area. What, what other uh, type could that root be? Prohibited area. When I was working at LaGuardia, when we were modeling, it was a huge shaft uh, in the center of the terminal. I suspect there was some some secret activity. You weren't allowed to model anything through that area. You weren't allowed to model anything. Do not enter. Even in the model, right? Even in the model, you were prohibited from going places. Found it fascinating. The LaGuardia project um, is a notch in my belt that I'll take with me. Uh, it was a very, very interesting project. I wish I would have had an opportunity to uh, to do it a little uh, a little more robust, a little more. If I, you know how it is in life, you go back and augment and and perfect. You know, as you hone, as you hone. I wish I could have had a little more of a chance to hone, but I'm probably just going to go to another airport anyway. I, I, that's, airports tend to be my thing. I, uh, I, for some reason, I, I keep getting pulled back into the airline business. It's like Clark Griswold from National Lampoon's Vacation. All right, so anyway, uh, yeah, 
the uh, the name of the parenthesis will always be associated to the area calculation type you used. In the project browser, select both level one and two under the area plans usable area. Right click and select apply view template from the context menu. So we did that before. Hit control from the context menu, right mouse click, apply view template. You could also do it down here. You could do it down here as well in the view dialog, uh, the view, uh, the views uh, properties palette. But again, right now uh, within the context, the context menu is the right mouse click menu, right? And depending on what you select, you're going to get different commands. Sometimes even repeat commands, which is good, like in AutoCAD, you hit enter, you do a command, you hit enter again, it goes right back into the commands. But uh, that's another thing. You're going to you have a hard time transitioning to the fact that you don't have a command bar. You have a status bar, but there's no command bar to manually type in those auto list routines that you're used to typing in, those uh, into the SQL servers. You're not going to have that opportunity in Revit, right? There isn't any direct command input per se. So that's going to be a hard thing for you to comprehend. You know, all those things, mass properties and lists and all those nice commands that you like to utilize to uh, determine the moment of inertia or the centroids of some of these 3D shapes, you're just going to have to find it out a different way. So that learning curve is going to call the herd. And I told Tom from Microdesk this, the software is calling the herd. I need you to know that. I've instructed many people and the industry is sending these people to these classes in droves, to Colin Addison in droves to learn this. And uh, I said to myself, the, the most prudent thing for me would probably be, be don't teach it to them. <laughs> I said, wait a second. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> wait a second. If this is Colin Hurd, then what the fuck would I do? Why would I teach it to them? It, 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 it's a business decision, right? The, the, the prudent thing to do in business would be to not let them know. But again, I'm a humanitarian. So there's a side of me that says, let's keep it a secret. And then there's a side of me that says, no, 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 this would benefit everybody. So I don't know, you know, hopefully it will, it'll, it'll call whether it wants to or not. If, you, if, you, if you're not gonna go and try to achieve this level and learn this and put this on your repertoire of skills, you'll be called. It's simple. If, if, you, if anyone knows anything, about the street, anything about cattle. Maybe this probably, if I should really, um, I should pay for this ad uh, to go to Texas. I, I bet you folks in Texas would understand. <laughs> they would understand much better than most folks about calling. Google that, Google calling. You'll see what I mean. And COVID-19 will reiterate that point. Apply view template, area plan. All right, so yeah, in the project browser, select both level one and two under the area plans, usable area, click and apply view template from the context menu. In the apply view template dialog box, choose area plan from the list of view templates, click OK to apply the template and close the dialog box and this will apply this template to any plan that has this associated with it. So if you change any variable within the view template dialog box and this view template, it's gonna change across all of those and I had learned that the hard way. Um, you can also apply it and then turn it off. It'll retain those attributes. And then you can still tweak it within the view control bar and the properties palette. Um, but these settings will not be available to you in the properties palette. And certain ones won't be available in the view control bar because they're being overridden by the view template, which is the beauty of it. You could apply view templates. And think about this as a, as a, as a technician or as a, uh, an operator of Revit. You can go to a firm and then they say, okay, well, here's your terminal. And guess what? Well, here are all your view templates. It won't be that difficult for you to produce. If you go into a firm that's a savvy firm that has already has a system in place that allows you to come in and just produce. Listen, we've drawn the building. Do us a favor. Annotate it for us. Again, there's room for everyone. I'll find my niche. Again, I don't know where I'm going yet. I'm gravitating all over. So I haven't uh, decided um, where I'm going to fit in. I'm going to let the industry decide for me. That's just how it works. It's funny how things are in life. You'll find a place here. And uh, again, sometimes, you know, I want to go down to Broadway and lease, you know, 1,200 square feet, throw a plotter in there, throw a sign on the window. But again, you have to have a customer base. You can't just open a business with the hope that you're going to be able to advertise and, and customers are going to come in through the door. So, yeah, there's a part of me that says, okay, I can open up a small little BIM company and I can sell my services to firms looking to either 
uh, uh, send me hard copies to coordinate or generate into electronic BIM components and then coordinate it and do it that way or maybe offer some shop drawing services for some electrical contractor or some contractors. I thought about that. So that's a huge overhead investment and there's no guarantee. Now, if I had a clientele base, then I'll be okay. I can hire some staff, maybe get a plotter, but then again, you lose one client and then boom, you close up shop. I mean, look what's happening now. So for me, I'm not 100% sure if I want to invest any money in this. Being that, the software is free. If the software is free, then a savvy individual would say to themselves, hmm, what is the most lean way you can operate a business with no overhead whatsoever, right? No overhead. Um, I'm only going to charge you 5% for wear and tear on tools, but I will charge you for mobilization. And if you're going to pay for the subscription, you're going to pay for that too. So, that being said, I had a, cl a collaboration meeting the other day for a position. <laughs> I was talking to the guy and he started rushing me on the phone. I got an attitude with him and I hung up the phone and they were trying to hire me. I did so well on the interview and I just hung up. <laughs> he, he started to apply too much pressure and I knew that the, the gentleman on the other end of the camera didn't know how to use the software. That's why he was looking for someone like me. And as he started to apply the pressure, I decided, you know what, you're impressed with my skills. So I hung up the phone and I said to myself, okay, well now um, there's time that he has to adhere to because he still hasn't found an individual to fill the position. That was my thought process. I was going to throw the pressure right back on him. And in, in, in that case, I wound up digging my own grave a little deeper because I performed very well during the interview. You see how it works? You know, pressure both works both ways. There's, there's some desperate, these are desperate times now, right? Desperate. And what are they, again, maybe it may not show itself in the market, but when they say when there's blood in the streets by real estate. All right, so that being said, yeah, uh, apply the view template uh, from the dialog box. Choose area plan from the list of templates. Note that this method applies the view template properties to the views, but it does not associate the templates with the views. It applies the template properties to the views, but it does not associate the template with the views. To permanently assign the view template to the views, edit the view template parameter in the properties palette. Well, apply it. It's applied, but it doesn't associate it. Now it's associated. But now look here. I can't, it's grayed out, it's half-toned. The detail level, the uh, graphic display options is even grayed out, right? Depth queuing, sketchy lines, sketchy lines. Lighting, photographic exposure, all of this is grayed out um, because it's being controlled by the view template. And pre some of these pre-packaged templates are beautiful and some are better than others. In any event, I spent so long saying, oh, I want the view template that shows this building in such a photorealistic uh, way, and I couldn't find one until I found some of the plugins that utilize a different rendering engine. This rendering engine is utilized in this platform to convey a certain level of detail aesthetically. Um, if your intent is to use this platform uh, for your uh, photorealistic images that you're going to put up on an easel as your clients walk into the room, there's different software for that. And if this template is, if this, if it's your intent to design these particular structures, to put on a, a, a tin a plywood placard to stick on the exterior of the construction site to say, coming soon in 2019, 500 story building in Abu Dhabi, then that's a whole other story. Um, so again, uh, there's maybe a place for you. There may be a place for you. But how proud would you be of yourself? And how happy would you be to see one of your structures that you designed in this platform or any platform to be stuck up there on a, a placard or a small piece of paper uh, mailed around the town or to a client showing your work? Look, Mom, hang it up on the fridge. That's all this is. This is, look, Mom, please hang it up on the refrigerator for me. Nothing's changed. This is kindergarten work. That's what pisses me off of that. You can teach this to a child in kindergarten and they would appreciate it more. Mom, please, look, I hung it up on the fridge. Aren't you proud of me? And there's just so many people along the way that lose sight of that. Puff the magic fucking dragon. 
I guess you have to have kids. I don't know. Maybe you have to have kids. Or it's the way you were raised. It's the way you were raised. <clears throat> Told you. If you begrudge an education, this course isn't for you. If you're overzealous, this course isn't for you. If, if you're, uh, if you're, if you're, if there's too much testosterone flowing through your veins, this is, this, this course isn't for you. If, uh, if you, if you're jealous, this course isn't for you. If you have an agenda, an ulterior motive, a modus operandi that just is, is skewed from the big picture, this course isn't for you. This course is for someone else. It's for three-year-olds. I get into my horse lips. It's for three-year-olds, thoroughbreds. This course is thoroughbreds. Those who aspire to be pros. Unlike me. Okay, anyway. Before I, my dander was raised. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll assign it, but I won't associate it with it. Again, word association. Are we associated? Is this an association? Or is this just going to be a PBX channel over and over and over? Where's the money, man? Where's the money? All right. Stop it, Mike. You, remember, Mike, you're not in this for the money. View reference. Uh, view references, furniture, and floor patterns are turned off based on the settings defined in the view template. For more detailed information on using view templates, refer to Chapter 4, Configuring Templates and Standards. And it really isn't that um, robust, but real quick. If you go to, uh, to level one, you right mouse click it, you could create view template from view. You can set this all up and say, okay, whew, I got it just the way I want. <laughs> well, hang on to it or you'll be doing it a lot. Make sure you, you, you realize that. Or you can apply a template right there, right from, uh, right from the context menu from selecting a plan. Uh, and it works in all plans, in lots of plans. And view templates, view templates, view template. You can create whatever view template you want. Now, hold on, let me get my, um, let me satisfy my oral fixation. <laughs> I empathize with those who, who <clears throat> I can empathize with you with the rug burns on your knees. I empathize. I pity you if you have a lot of rug burns on your knees. Gotta be horrible. Not, not, for, not for the recipient. In any event, stop it, stop. It. This class is for three year olds. I really shouldn't talk like that. The PTA wouldn't approve of it. I'm sure the BOE, the Board of Ed, wouldn't approve of that. God, can you imagine pulling that stunt in a classroom over at Bell High School? Holy shit. Holy shit. That would be something, right? Whew. I'd be dragged out of there in fucking handcuffs. Be a challenge, though. You see, but I had the opportunity, and I didn't behave that way. When I taught, taught the Amish, I taught this class to the Amish. You think I'm kidding? I'm not lying. Go Google Union, Pennsylvania, and I taught that class there, too. My favorite class. That was my favorite class to teach. Not these assholes from Local 3. Those miserable bastards. Hey, everyone had an excuse over there. What a trip. A couple of them, though. A couple of them. I ain't going to name names. Yeah, I'll, t I'll tell you. I taught this class at the Joint Industry Board of the Electrical Industry. I taught this class to a couple of corporations, some large corporations. I taught this class to a couple of uh, uh, corporations uh, out west. And I taught this class to uh, an Amish community um, out in uh, Pennsylvania. But it was a different curriculum. And in the process of doing that, I, I started to devise a scheme and a plan while I was doing it. And the plan isn't finished. I haven't implemented it yet. But I do have a plan. It's just I haven't revealed it yet. The, and the plan may not be as, uh, as crystal clear as you think. So uh, you may make, you can speculate all you want. But there's a plan. I have a plan. I do. I swear as God's my witness, I have a plan. There's a method to my madness. And, and uh, the plan, I'll be honest, I'll tell you a little bit about it. I enjoy doing this. I enjoy doing this. I like to see the glimmer in their eye. I like to see them get excited about it. I like to see a guy or a girl who's been spending the last 10, 15 years laying out circuits on, on a piece of paper. And I like to see them say, wait a second. 
You, you, you're telling me I could take all that knowledge that I learned in the field and I could apply it and sit in a desk and then do both. I can design, lay out, and then go out in the field and, and, and use my tools too? Is that what you're telling me? And that's exactly what I'm telling you. I'm telling you, all you folks that have spent all these years doing all of these things and you've, you love to do them, right? Well, why not um, take all that education that you've been able to attain and take it to the next level and then you know, do you know how much I wish I knew, uh, how much I envy the folks that have been spending the last 20 years uh, bending conduit or, or, or miter boxing or, 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 or uh, uh, burning or taking and migging or, 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 or putting some flux on a copper pipe or putting in a porcelain uh, bidet? Do you know how much I envy them? Because I'll tell you, because if I spent 10, 15, 20 years doing it and then I decided to do this, do you have any idea the level of expertise that I can achieve? But I still have to go ask questions because I can't take any of the information that they have and convey it because I need them. But see, it's a double-edged sword. They can't convey what they need without me, right? So it's a double-edged sword. That's why collaboration is so important. Sure, I can do all this on the computer, but uh, and is it going to be code compliant? Uh, uh, is it going to these rooms? Am I going to waste space? Am I going to be efficient? I have shortcomings. I, again, nobody knows it all. Everybody needs somebody. Doctors refer each other around, you know, around town all the time. But what I'm telling you, what's this? I, I've been preaching this forever and ever and ever. I'm telling you, I knew a long, long time ago when I first. When I used to sit in class and, and draw Eddie on the Iron Ma uh, from the Iron Maiden albums, I knew that there was a, there was a, a secret that I was supposed to keep and hold to, to, to my close to my vest until I got there. And remember that let music be your master. It was when I was playing the clarinet and I started to appreciate the art, uh, and, and I started to appreciate that, and, and I started to disregard the science and, and the mathematics. I started to blend the arts and the sciences together, uh, and, and then it really started to hit home. And I says, if I could somehow, if I could somehow expose myself to the various aspects of the field and the disciplines in education, I'll be a much more well-rounded individual down the road. I won't be biased. I won't be biased, you know. And this is this is a business of tolerance. You meet so many individuals that have been through the the ringer, and you're going to have to be able to resonate with them and understand their plight. And, and, and you can hear it, you can hear it from the music. It's in the music, man. Listen to the music. This is articulation. We're sending out notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? E, A, D, G, B, E. We're gonna be sending out notes, A size, B size, C size, D size, E size, F, a F sharp, a B flat, right? You're gonna get flats on your way to work. If you went as hard as I do, you're going to run out of gas, you're going to get flats. Why? Because you're going to want it so bad. You're going to want it so bad that it's going to be so hard on you. You're going to break down and you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to you, you may not get there because you're going to give up. I don't want you to. I want you to keep going, man. You're going to get, you're going to get your car towed. You're going to get tickets. You're going to, you might even get thrown in the can. You may even get thrown in the can. I don't know. I don't want you to lose. Uh, I don't want you to lose your cool, but I wanted it so bad, man. I wanted it so bad, and I didn't necessarily want it to necessarily manifest itself with my name in lights, the Lopinski Design Group on a fucking skyscraper. It wasn't that I didn't want to see my name in lights. I wanted to understand architecture. I wanted to understand engineering. I wanted to understand the environment that I was in. I wanted to understand the ecosystem. That's why I studied oceanography. That's why I studied geoscience. That's why I studied math. And I, that's why I was fascinated with the world that I live in. I, I didn't hate the world that I lived in. I was fascinated by the world that I lived in. And I wanted to understand more and more and more. Because that is, it'll keep you going. It'll keep you going. It's when you, you stop and you, you just start to, you give up, and then it's just, you know, one, then, all you, then all you want to do is cast blame on why it is you perceive the world from that perspective. And I've been trying to tell you, but I, I get much, uh, I get my lot of resistance. I've been trying to tell you. But I, I know it didn't fall on deaf ears because, listen, I've been in a lot of shops. <laughs> a lot of people know me. 
I get a lot of work, believe it or not. I made some cash. I'm, I'm not a wealthy man, but it, to me I am. Because I, what I value is, is something that you may not. Wealth is a very, very, very interesting term. Intrinsic value is something I can't teach you. It may be different to everyone, but intrinsic value, I hold tantamount. What is it worth to you? What does it mean? Is, is it the money? What is it that, that you know, what does it make you happy? Where the folks your boat? Where it blows up your skirt, right? All right, so I'm doing it again. I'm doing it again. I promised I wouldn't. So now, view references. The furniture and the floor, all that stuff, as you can see. If I uh, play with the view temp a little bit, let me turn on the structural framing plan for a second. You'll start to see, I didn't do much. You'll start to see uh, that certain things, actually, let's just do it this way. Certain things disappeared, right? Certain things disappeared. Once we applied those templates, <laughs> as you can see, it didn't come back to apply it. So we go back over here, area plan. Am I uh, going for tangent? Look at that, circular references. They say insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. That's not the case. I, I, I'm getting results. All right, so view references. Furniture and floor patterns are turned off based on the settings defined in the view template. For more detailed information on using view templates, refer to chapter four. When looking at an, the area plan on your screen, you'll notice a thick purple line running around the inside face of the exterior wall. This is the area boundary line. Note that we have changed the default properties of the area boundary line in the figures within this property for clarity. Uh-oh, I don't see it. I don't see it. Do you see the purple line? It must be a uh, fluorine laser. I mean, maybe I'm having a, uh, I'm, I'm having a, uh, a, a valproic acid trip. Hold on a second. Let me make sure I'm not having a valproic acid trip. Let's go through the steps again. Apply the properties, and then apply the template. All right. I'm on level two, right? Unless something happened in the interim. Like I said, maybe it was a valproic acid trip. You'll notice a thick purple line running around the inside face of the exterior wall. I don't see a thick purple line. Do you? I don't see a thick purple line. Maybe I'm missing something. Let's see. Nope. Don't see it. Let me just double check my uh, math here. Area plane is on for level one. Area plane is on. Thick purple line. Is that purple? Oh, there it is. That's purple. Sorry. Oh, they, oh you know what? It's thick, right? Well, it's not that thick. Now it's thick. It's about as thick as me. Stupid pole lock. All right, so that's what I get for not paying attention, right? That's what I get for not paying attention. But again, this class is for three-year-olds. All right, so let's take a look at level one. And there it is. Oh, thank the Lord for that. Okay, so, whew, I got a little nervous there. I thought I was going to have to end the video and do it again because I look like an idiot. So worried about your appearance. God forbid. I would never make a video like that. Look at his teeth. Look at his teeth. Look at this guy's teeth. How could he possibly be successful? You don't listen to me. What would I know? Look at my teeth. Huh, I can't possibly know anything about this industry with a girl like this. So listen to the person that just said that to you. There's absolutely no way you can learn anything from me with a mouth like this. <laughs> All right, so this is the area. This is the boundary line. Note that we have changed the default properties of the area boundary line. Facades. Type. In the figures within this project for clarity. Insecurity. 
if you're insecure, this class isn't for you. The software has attempted to calculate your plan based on some predefined rules. For the most part, it does a reasonable job of figuring out where the boundaries are, but from time to time, <coughs> those lines need some adjusting. You will learn over time whether this automation works based on the complexity of the perimeter walls in your designs. If they're complex and not clearly closed, the results of the automated boundary placement may be undesirable. In the project browser, find the node area plans gross building and open either of the plans. Notice the difference in the application of the area boundaries to the exterior walls. The area boundaries are applied to the outside faces of the exterior walls. In the usable area plans, the boundaries are assigned to the inside faces of the exterior walls. Also, adapting to window elements. So let's look at the adaptation. Right. In the uh, usable area, is it the opposite? It could, from initial glance, it looks like it's the other way around. From the initial uh, glance, it's saying that the gross area building, um, uh, the area boundaries are to the exterior walls, uh, and that the usable area boundaries are assigned to the inside faces of the exterior walls. That doesn't look like it's the case, but then again, these are thick lines. But it does appear that the windows, yeah, yeah no, that doesn't make sense because they're thick. So allows us to make this a little thinner, which I really can't because you can barely see them. But if we zoom in, this line we probably should be a little thinner. But yeah, it's, apply, it's following the contour of the window and then applying itself to the interior. Uh, and that is the usable area, but gross building, you'll see it's to the exterior and it's, it's, an, it's excluding the, uh, oh, well, I should say it's, in, it's including the, the pocket for the windows. Um, it's probably a bad terminology for that. The encapsulated gross area of the window footprint. Maybe that's a better term. And again, what usually happens is that if I can't find a word, I'll just go to the web and I'll surf it up and find the just, just the word I'm looking for. But sometimes when you're up at the bully pul pulpit and you have to think on the fly, the word may not come to mind. And then someone may think that you used, there was a better use of the word. And I tell my kids this all the time. Um, can you find a better usage for that word? Like my son, Scott. Uh, he, had, he had asked about the pet that I have, and he, I had mentioned to him that, that my neighbor had a uh, <laughs> had a, a carbon monoxide scare. They were cooking, and the fire department came. And I, I had let, let them know that there was some carbon monoxide within the, uh, the building. And my son had asked me, did your mouse succumb to the fumes? And I said to him, that was a very good use of the word. And he replied to me, succumb my nuts. <laughs> He responded to me, succumb my nuts. This is my eldest son. He's a comedian. In any event, that wasn't a bad usage of the word either. Don't make me smile. You know how embarrassed I am of my grill. on my nuts. Anyway, relatively good usage. I, I gave him some props. All right, so, yeah, you'll notice that the outside faces the exterior walls. In the usable area plans, the boundaries are assigned to the inside faces of the exterior walls, also adapting to window elements. To complete this part of the exercise, you will place additional area boundaries to subdivide the interior space into different spaces. Activate the level one area plan for usable area. Uh, let me uh, close inactive for a second. That's gross building. That's usable area. Let me close this one. Double click on the down mouse wheel, on the mouse wheel down. From the architectural tab, select the room and area panel, click area boundary. From the architectural tab, click the uh, room and area panel, and use the room area boundary. Let me, oh, let me hover over that, let me cancel that. Area boundary. It defines boundaries for areas. Open an area plan view. You can define boundaries by clicking walls or drawing boundary lines. Area rules determine the wall boundary positions, such as wall center lines or exterior wall face. The default drawing method is a set to pick. Pick. Think about that. All your life you wanted to be a rock star. All your life you looked at uh, Ingve Malmsteen and you looked at uh, Eddie Van Halen all those years and, and you, you, you looked at these metal gods, uh, Hendrix, and um, I'll even throw in Prince. I'll even throw in Prince. Granted, he's not a metalhead. I'll throw in Prince, all these guitar heroes. I'll throw in uh, the Wilson sisters from Heart, uh, 
these guitarists, and to you, they're gods, right? They're gods, Barracuda, and all these fantastic songs, ripping up and down the frets, uh, throwing uh, Steve Harris from Maiden, all these, I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on and on, right? Anybody who's ever aspired to play in a band I could appreciate a pick. So here's your opportunity to have your own pick, to be your own rock star in your own little world uh, in this instrument, with this instrument. Maybe you couldn't play the uh, the the instruments that uh, uh, that you see and that you you, you kind of wish you could. Here's another one. Here's another attempt. Uh, this is another shot. You get another attempt. Maybe you, you couldn't hit those high notes. You didn't have the vocal cords for it. Well, here's your chance to to hit the high notes. You can even choose a size paper if you want. All right. You can send out sketches, SK drawings, all day long. Anyway. Again, use your pick. Notice uh, that it's set to pick. Pick lines. Pick, 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 pick. He must be a mother-in-law. <laughs> anyway, pick lines. Create a line based on an existing wall line or edge selected in the drawing. To select a chain of lines, move the cursor over the line segment, press tab to highlight the entire chain, and click. And in the options bar, the apply area rules setting is checked. Remember that this setting determines whether the location of the boundary will be affected by the area type property of the areas placed on either side of the boundary. Pick the interior walls indicated in 18.18. Pick the interior walls, 18.18. Well, there's one and there's two. Didn't say pick the room separator, but it would allow us to pick the room separator. Activate the level two area plan for usable area. And using the same method as in level one, add area boundaries to the interior walls indicated in figure 18.19. You will need to use the trim tool to adjust the line for the wall at the end of the corridor. Okay, well, let's take a look here. What it's saying is to pick this one, that's 18.18. Here's this one. At the end of the corridor, that's pretty ambiguous. There's a, uh, the corridor has two ends. Then there's this one. You will have to use the trim command. Okay. So do we have to use the trim? Or we have to use the, uh, yeah, we have to use the trim command. And they didn't even show you how to use it. <laughs> All right, hold on. We're going to have to use that too. Okay, so well now, wait a second. Look, it's going gonna, it's gonna to select this one. It's going to select this whole wall. That's not what it wants. Because this is already being this this boundary here is allo is uh, is comp is using is computing this area here. If we select this wall as the end of the hallway, it's going to double it up. So we have to let's get this one. Hold on. Still in pick lines. This one. This one. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm, Batman. Um, you know, I'm thinking this may be a railing of sorts. I'm not actually sure what this is. It could be a railing. I don't know, but it won't let me pick it. So I got this one, this one, this one. This one's going to be tricky. So we have to trim this one up, it's saying. So we go to the trim command. Trim extent to corner. Trim extend single element. Let's watch how it works. Select the reference. Trims or extends one element, such as a wall, line, or beam to a boundary defined by another element. Select a reference to use as the boundary, then click the element to trim or extend. When selecting an element to trim, click on the part of the element you want to retain. So, within the context of doing that, we could single element, uh, click on the boundary. Now the boundary can be tricky, right? Let's use the, let's use the uh, area boundary as the boundary that we're going to clip. Click on the area, that you want, the, the line that you want to keep. So let's click on this side of it, right? Wow, I got it right on the first time. Holy cow. I'm a draftsman. Let's hope this works. Hopefully I don't lead you down the wrong road. Okay, so I think we may have gotten it. Now, what does that do? That's it. It's all told us to do. It doesn't say anything else. All right. Well, fantastic. Fantastic. That's all it tells us to do. Okay, so we have now two areas. Tab. Let's see here. Ah. So I see, we have, to, we have to trim, we can't just trim there. We also have to trim here, right? Let's see if I can trim this one. Oop, I clicked on the wrong side. See that? Click on this side, oops. Select the, the clipping boundary first, just like an AutoCAD. Trim, 
you, you can trim your select where you want to cut it, right? And the side you want to cut. Hold on. Come on. Is that, unless, of course, that's it, it's extension. Hold on. Let me get a, that's what I want to, this is what I want to keep. Hmm. Hmm. What if I do that instead? That won't let me do that. Hold on a second. We experiment. There. That's the, uh, that's another way to do it. Oops, except it didn't work there. These grips always help. But we won't get it? Nope, I'll get it over there. Oops, it wants to go to there, though. It wants to go to the core wall. It wants to go to the core because well, I picked it. And that's where it's, uh, that's where it's meeting, right? That's where it's joining. Wall joints. It wants to go to the wall joint. All right, it doesn't really give us much more than that. But I did want to just find out. It was a railing. I knew it. All right, so that's it for that. And I talked a lot, and I apologize. But again, this is an educational assessment on your behalf and mine. And I'd like you to get to know me a little bit better. Because again, I really don't talk much when I get to the office, and I let you, you know, perceive me in any perspective you want and give you that luxury. Those who know me know me well. Those who don't, don't. And we'll see. I may never ever get a job again. Do you see his career suicide attempt? You may look at this and say, wow, that's career suicide. Could very well be. I could be digging my grave right now. I would never hire a guy like that. Look at his behavior. Oh, my Lord. Heavens to Betsy. He's a madman. Absolutely not. Never at my firm. My son wouldn't tolerate that behavior.